We're down to 17 cars. Stedman Marlin exits the race with engine trouble in his uh, Sadler Racing number 95. Well, I know he's unhappy, but I bet his mom's sighed a relief. <laughs> The ARCA officials indicating that the one hour time limit is a guideline and not an actual fixed limit. They believe they'll be able to get these 10 laps in uh, without interfering with the pre-race and preparations for the Winston tonight. Well, this is something Frank Kim, he don't want to see right now, oh, all this oh. lap traffic. Man, that, that car he just passed, uh, got down on the apron and almost got up into him. That would be the worst nightmare of leading this race would be lap traffic. And I was worried about, you know, uh, Kirby having the most trouble with traffic because he's kind of a young guy and a rookie. But uh, boy, Kimmel almost got taken out by that slow car. Kimmel passes Ron Cox and the number six of Tim Mitchell without incident. He's still got more lap traffic up in front of him he's going to need to contend with. Well, Stuart Kirby's catching these cars about where you'd like to down the straightaway and in the, in the, in the uh, exit of the turns. Kimball, on the other hand, has caught him in all the wrong places, it seemed like. Now, last lap, it was 1.58 seconds, first to second. He gained a little bit more, Mike, 1.6 seconds, but Stuart Kirby had caught traffic in the wrong place over in turn three and four. Right, Jeff? Yeah, Mike, we keep talking about catching this lap traffic just so everybody understands that these lead cars are running as much as 15 miles an hour faster than some of this traffic they're overcoming, so it gets very anxious when these guys come up on them that quick. Well, they just got to, he just got caught up some more there. Kimmel did, and uh, Kirby really gained on him in that corner. Yeah, he cut it from 1.6 seconds down to half a second. And you see how much quicker even Tim Steele was than the two leaders. Cost Frank Kimmel seven, eight miles per hour. Wow. Tim Steele has the fastest race car right now, but he's uh, three and a half seconds behind with seven laps to go. That's a lot of ground to make up. You lose momentum like that, you do a lot of talking to the car to get that <laughs> momentum back up. Oh, that's that's when you're glad that you got that radio in there because <laughs> rather than talking to yourself, you can talk to your crew chief or some of your crew members. And they'll say, what did he say? Back up to a second now. He, he gained, you know, half of what he had lost back. So uh, he's got a fast race car, just catching lap traffic in the wrong places. We've got six laps to go. I believe Kimmel probably decided to tiptoe by some of these cars after what almost happened to him down here in turn three. I tell you, that was mighty close. I think he's been a little more cautious with these lap cars now. And his car is fast enough that he, he doesn't have to force the issue. In the last six races, Frank Kimmel's had five top fives and three wins in the last three events. And he won here in 1998 a couple of years ago. Well, his brother, the owner of that car is Larry Clemens, and uh, that's Conrad Clemens, who owns Featherlight. They're, that's his brother. Featherlight trailer. That's the trailer company that builds about every trailer all these every trailers race team here. has here. And I tell you, they have got an awesome program going on. That car has just been incredible this year, particularly. Well, that's this year, particularly. It's been the last couple of years that that's been the dominant car. At one time, we'd come to these races, we'd expect Tim Steele to win all of them, and that's he right. did. And uh, Kimball's kind of replaced him. Darrell, this young fellow, though, Stuart Kirby, how many <laughs> Winston Cup owners do you think have an eye on this young fellow? I tell you, I'd be thinking mighty seriously about him. After seeing how he run at Daytona, he did just a masterful job down there. This is not an easy racetrack to come to and run well. Here he's in second place and a very, very respectable run tonight. That's a good race car, and he's doing a great job. To finish second at Charlotte Motor Speedway, all the Winston Cup car owners standing on top of these trailers watching what's going on. Not a bad night. Not a bad night. Cat in the hat will be calling him. <laughs> Someone will. Dick? And Stuart Kirby's night will not be over when the checkered flag falls here, Mike. Once this is all done and over with, he is going to sprint out of this place and head to the Nashville Speedway. He's planning to run a short track race later tonight. Now, that's my kind of racer right Good there. That's him. the way we used to do it in the old days. See how many races we could run in one day. Run somewhere in the afternoon, somewhere that night, and set, you drive all night to get to the race the next day. Well, he won't have any trouble with the traffic. It's all headed into Lowe's Motor Speedway for the running of the Winston Open. Now, I used to have to hurry back to Nashville back in the old days so I could win enough money to keep going in the Winston Cup Series. Maybe that's his plan. Frank Kimmel going to come around for the white flag. And it'll be one to go. 
Over a two and a half second lead. He just needs to be smooth here on this last lap. If he catches any lap traffic, just take his time. Stuart Kirby across the stripe, 2.6 seconds back, and a further 2.6 seconds back to Tim Steele. Not a bad night for uh, Stanton Barrett either. That's a good run for him, and then Keith, another good night for him as well. Coming off turn four for the final time, and the defending ARCA Series champion makes it four wins in a row. Kimmel picks up his 27th career ARCA victory. There's pretty a look much from the advanced auto parts. Pretty much rewriting the ARCA record book right now. Every single week. Advance in the uh, nation's pork producers. I got to tell you, I got to tell you this story real quick. I was running an ARCA race, and uh, and John Markham, who started this series and was the father of this series, I was on pole at Nashville, and he came over to me before the race started. And I qualified like a second quicker than anybody else, and he said, uh, "Let me ask you something, Daryl. Do you like to fish?" I said, "No, sir. I don't fish. I just race. That's all I do." Well, if you get out here and stink up my show tonight, you're going to come in and pitch me, and you're going to talk about fishing for a while. <laughs> They're going to be telling Kimmel that before long. Kimmel's going to be uh, over there at that Bass Pro Shop over Concord Mills investing in lures <laughs> for next week after his fourth ARCA win in a row. Frank Kimball, the winner. Stuart Kirby, a week after his 20th birthday, claims second. Tim Steele, after his pit stop third. Stanton Barrett, a fine fourth place run. And David Keith from Owensboro, Kentucky. Lanigan, Jarrett, Swain, Belmont, and Coward, the top 10. 16, make that 17 cars, counted the damage machine of Kerry Earnhardt, took the checkered flag. Finished 20th after being in that wreck, 29 <laughs> laps down. He knew it would pay off to get back out there. And it did. So all these cars involved in that big wreck back on lap eight. Most of them. And the coach, Jerry Glanville. Poor old coach. Arca point standings, Tim Steele falls a bit further back from Frank Kimmel. Jarrett, Jason Jarrett third, Andy Belmont fourth, and Ron Cox fifth in points. Rev that thing up. Well, that's exciting, isn't it? Familiar sight. Frank Kimmel in an Arca victory lane. You demand, Frank. Arca Remax Series banners going up. Coming you know, up, the Winston Open. And that no bull shootout for the last transfer spot and the Winston. NASCAR's all star night and a lot of pre-race ceremony to come here on FX. Got his Hans device on. Like to see that. Smart man. And you know what's his fun? It's four wins in a row, and he's still excited. Every time you win, it never gets old. Talk to him, Matt. Well, Frank Kimmel climbs up on top of the car. Everybody celebrating down here. Frank, boy, just how great was that race car? And I think it showed it tonight. What a car. Uh, we threw a bunch at it right before the race. We knew we were too tight yesterday, and uh, with all that sun and everything we had, uh, I didn't know if we made the right choice, but Bill and the guys did a great job, and uh, man, what a car. <laughs> that was great. Got to thank Advance Auto Parts and Pork. Uh, you know, their greatest sponsor is Arkin. We got the greatest car right now. It's great. He sure does. Four straight wins. Four in a row. Pretty good show. Actually, his brother is the crew chief on that car, I think. I'm not mistaken. Frank Kimmel, point leader, defending champion, and now four in a row winner. Great eye for Stuart Kirby, Tim Steele, Stanton Barrett, David Keith. It was a wild one, and we've just started Stock Car Racing's All-Star Night. A big pre-race to come for the Winston. Stay with us here on FX.